Hey guys, welcome back to the VoIP guys on introducing Asterix. Uh, last time around, we finished off with debugging our uh, SIP trunks and so on, so on with Wireshark, which means it's time finally to start looking at SIP providers. So Matthias, what are we going to do? Uh, I think in this video tutorial, we're just talking about the SIP providers mm -hmm. and how they offer their services, what the differences are okay. and mm -hmm. stuff like this before we dive into it. Choose one as example. Yeah. and then um, show how it really works. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, in general, there are two different kinds of SIP providers. Right. Um, so first of all, what is a SIP provider? SIP provider just takes your calls by SIP, yep. not ISDN, not analog, not mm -hmm. GSM, SIP, yep. um, which is pure IP connection. Okay. And then he sends all your calls to the PSDN. Right, okay. So to the landlines or mm -hmm. other mobile, something like this. Mm -hmm. So it's a kind of just a, like a normal telephony provider, but he only uses SIP. SIP. Right. Okay. IP SIP. Mm -hmm. So this is the first thing um, you have to search somebody who can offer this service. Okay. And um, now there are different kinds of services, uh, services which are offered. And this is very important to understand. Mm -hmm. The first thing is um, a SIP provider just provides you an account mm -hmm. and you register to the SIP provider right. over the internet. Uh -huh. So you just go to Google or the Where your favorite uh, search, search engine, engine yeah. mm -hmm. and type in SIP provider, something like this. Yep. And then for sure you will find very soon some SIP providers. Okay. Um, but many of them just provide you, you can register there. Mm -hmm. And then they provide you some credentials. Then you have to register to the SIP proxy mm -hmm. um, with your credentials. And then they send calls to you right. for your number, which you registered. Mm -hmm. And um, you send out the calls to the PSDN network. Uh -huh. um, but um, you have to understand that what's in between you and the SIP provider is the internet. So yeah. if, I take, if I place a call, mm -hmm. then it goes through the internet. Um, through different providers, maybe yeah. through different routers, um, which are owned by some vendors, the vendor of your um, in internet access. Mm -hmm. I don't know, so somebody owns that. Yeah. Or well, um, they could router. be a reseller who's selling for somebody else who goes from that portal to the next portal and so on and so on. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the okay. main problem there, or it's not a big deal, it works in most cases, but what you have to keep in mind is that if you register such a provider mm -hmm. and you say the telephony quality is not okay for me because we have some packets lost, we have a too slow connection, then he can say, okay, um, maybe it's your internet connection, maybe this is a router in between. Mm -hmm. So um, the yeah. provider is just responsible from the point of his registration or right. its res registration point to the PSDN, mm -hmm. but he cannot guarantee that. Um, the line between you and him, which goes over the internet, is okay. He cannot yep. ensure the quality of service of that line. So basically, if you've got any sort of environment that has, uh, you know, that depends on call volumes or, and really needs high quality calls, then this is not an option that you really should be considering. Yes, it could work, but uh, and in, in the most cases it works. Mm -hmm. But if you have a problem, it's really hard to debug and it's really hard to say who is responsible for that problem. Yeah, that's probably the hardest part. Is it yes. who's responsible? Is it the PBX? Is it the internet connection? Is it the provider? Right. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So there are there is another sort of providers, or many providers can offer you both services. Mm -hmm. um, this is they ensure the connection to your site. Ah. So you get a separate line for your mm -hmm. IP calls, or not a separate. Maybe in some cases you get one line where they provide you internet access. Mm -hmm and IP telephony, uh -huh. something like this. Um, it does not matter how they do it, um, but they can ensure then quality of service from their um, SIP switch to your PBX. And then you have uh -huh. one person who sells you the whole service and you can say it does not work. Please right. figure out why okay. and mm -hmm. ensure the quality of service. Right. Mm -hmm. um, in most cases, those connections are more expensive for sure because they have a dedicated line or a dedicated VLAN or whatever. Yeah. Um, so this is something to consider. But once again, if you're in that sort of environment where you have the high call volume, really good quality, then the return on investment on these things is going to be 
better in the long run, I should imagine. Yes, depends on your service, whatever yeah. you want, what, mm -hmm. what, what are your needs. Um, maybe if you have uh, no telephone connection for one day, this is not a problem because you're only working with emails. I don't know. Yeah. You have to con consider mm -hmm. that. Okay, fair enough. Um, that's it um, for what you should choose and mm -hmm. different technologies. Um, what else um, should you have a look at? Um, this is which codecs are supported. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so is the asterisk which you are using, um, does it support the same codecs as the provider? Okay, yeah. Something mm -hmm. like this. Um, but generally that's it. Right, okay. So. And no, one last thing. Okay. No, not one last thing. So something else to mention is there is a difference between a SIP peer and a SIP trunk. Right, okay. Um, there are two different uh, options. A trunk is you register once. Mm -hmm. And you have lots of extensions or lots of numbers registered with mm -hmm. this zip trunk. So it is a trunk for all your numbers yeah. mm -hmm. um, you have. And the other thing is a zip peer where you just register and then you register one number, mm -hmm. only one number with that account. And if you need a second number, then you register a second number, a second account. Uh -huh. So yeah. this is also a, a difference um, between um, user based and really a trunk. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think this is all you have to know to choose the SIP provider. And it's a good idea if you have already internet access, maybe uh, your internet access provider also provides some yeah. kind of VoIP. Yeah. This is the Converge most... solution yes, of sorts. I think so. Yeah, okay. We did a little research. <laughs> Let's have a look. <laughs> and <laughs> we found out SIP protection. <laughs> so if you want to protect yourself, <laughs> yeah. please buy one of those products. They're really great. <laughs> Yeah, that was a bit of a theoretical uh, tutorial today, so we ended up with a bit of a, a laugh there. But next time around, we're going to actually uh, take a provider and have a look at it, I yes. assume. Okay, good. So next time around, we're going to get a bit more hands-on. Thanks very much for watching. Until next time. See Goodbye. you.